Hi, I'm Luisa De Moro from Bloomberg NEF, speaking from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm the project manager for the Global Climate Scope, which is one of the BNF's, BNF's largest projects and looks at market, emerging market attractiveness for clean energy transition. This is a fully public resource, so if there's anyone interested on the topic, I recommend you check it out. Uh, and I'm also the lead author of the report Power Transition Trends 2020 that we published a couple of weeks ago. And today I'm here to tell you a brief story of power sector transition over the past decade, show you some interesting findings from 2019, and also to hopefully help you raise some questions on what we can do better and how we can get to what we have committed for uh, faster. The global power sector went through a massive expansion and transformation over the past decade. Uh, power production since 2010 jumped 29%, and global installed capacity is spiked 44%. But it's really important to know that despite all the commitments that countries and business have made, fossil fuel is still the main source of power generation globally. And coal alone accounts for over a third of the all power produced globally in 2019. It's also important to highlight that most of this global power sector expansion, as well as the coal expansion, is actually a result of growth in emerging markets, population, and economy. In fact, if we look at over the past decade, Emerging markets power consumption has jumped over 50%, while in developed nations, the same has started, the, the global power consumption, consumption has uh, stayed pretty much flat. But there is some really good findings to highlight from this study. First of them, and one of the most interesting, is the fact that Global clean energy capacity, and especially wind and solar capacity, is growing really fast and now accounts for most of the power capacity installed worldwide. In 2019, specifically, wind and solar alone account for two thirds of all the capacity installed in the globe, up from just 24% in 2010. If we look at renewables all together, including hydro and other technologies, they account for three quarters of all the power capacity added to the global grid in 2019, up from just 38% in 2010. And because of that, fossil fuel has dropped as a share of the capacity commission every year to just 25% last year. To give you some reference, uh, the world installed 265 gigawatts of new capacity in 2019. And this is a lot more than what Germany has available right now. And this power sector expansion and clean energy expansion is a result of a quick drop in technology prices. PV modules, for example, based on this, that I think is the most important data set in the clean energy sector has dropped, PV modules have dropped 88% in price since 2010. Uh, and this is a result of an experience curve of almost 29%. This means basically that every time the PV capacity has doubled, the PV module price has dropped almost 29%. Wind technologies has also shown significant drop and significant progress. Uh, the price of wind turbines has declined 49% since 2010, and we also see an experience curve of 11%. On the wind sector, it's really important to highlight that not only wind sees the turbine prices falling, but it also sees a really increase, really big increase in efficiency of the technology, which means that we can generate more powers, more power with less capacity. A second really interesting trend that's also a result of a drop in technology price is the fact that not only we're adding more technology but the technologies are also spreading to more and more nations worldwide uh, if we look at 2019 we see that a third of the world's nations have installed 
more solar than any other technology. In other words, a third of the world's nations last year have chosen solar as their top technology choice. If we look at 2010, for example, we can clearly see that European countries were the only ones making this choice. European countries were the only ones installing more wind or solar than, than any other technology. And this is mainly basically because those technologies were still much more expensive than fossil fuel technologies, which is gas, coal, or oil. Therefore, those countries had to implement public policy to incentivize the technologies build up. Specifically, they had to implement feeding tariffs, which are basically a premium paid to those developers that choose to install and choose to generate power with those technologies. This includes, those nations include Germany, Italy, and many others in Europe. In 2014, with just a couple of ex ex exceptions, literally, wind and solar were still more expensive than fossil fuel technologies. However, we saw the clean energy policy spreading to more countries. So more nations, including emerging markets, had decided to implement clean energy policies that made renewables attractive for investors. And as a result of that, we saw more countries, more emerging markets, choosing clean energy technologies, choosing wind or choosing solar as their top technologies installed in 2014. This includes Mexico, Chile, and South Africa, for example. But in 2019, we saw this picture completely change. We saw a big transformation in that. And this is because now wind and solar have become most of the world cheaper than any other technology and cheaper than fossil fuel technology specifically. In fact, in DNF, in our LCOE work, we estimate that now two thirds of the globe live in countries where wind or solar or both are the cheapest option of new power. And this is really leading this clean energy revolution, this clean energy transformation. As a result of that, we not only see countries installing more clean energy capacity and major markets installing clean energy capacity more than any other technology, but we also see solar specifically reaching nations that were before dominated by fossil fuel technologies or by other sources of technology. This includes, for example, Colombia, Bolivia, Nigeria, and even South Africa. And those two trends, the fast growing and the spreading of clean energy technology, especially of wind and solar, have led to two power generation trends that are extremely relevant for energy transition conversations. First one of them is the fact that in 2019, the world, most of the new generation, most of the generation change came from wind and solar. And this is a first time ever. We have never seen that happen before. And the second is that we actually, as a globe, produce less coal than we did in 2018. Specifically, coal generation dropped 3% between 2018 and 2019. As a result of that, we also saw power sector emissions dropping a little bit, 1.5% in 2019 from 2018. And this is despite the fact that CO2 emissions from the power sector is actually rising in Asia almost every year and reached 37% of the total in 2019. But with all those good news in mind, there's something that I really need to point out and that I really would like everyone to remember. Yes, we're doing good progress. Yes, clean energy is spreading and growing a lot every year, but the coal capacity worldwide is also growing by a lot. And this is especially because of Asian markets. And before I mentioned that emerging markets have been leading the power sector growth, the power generation growth, and the issue is that those markets are actually having to commission or deciding to commission co-capacity to meet part of their demand. And of course, it's important to 
acknowledge the progress that some developed nations, especially the US and some many European countries have made in terms of the commissioning core capacity. Uh, those markets together, developed countries together have retired over 100 gigawatts of core capacity since 2010, but that has not been enough and has not been even close enough to offset the over 600 gigawatts of core capacity that was added to developing nations since 2010. And before I finish this presentation, uh, there's something that's really important that we keep in mind as well, which is for 2020, we do expect power sector generation, we do expect coal generation, and we expect as a result CO2 emissions to fall. And this is a result of the emergency responses that we saw most of the countries in the world implementing as a result of COVID-19. But the drops, as they are a result of a very unique year, they do not necessarily represent a trend. So it's important to keep in mind and to acknowledge this so we don't get to a dangerous path. And if we do want to see emissions falling further and falling fast, we need to continue the trends that I showed earlier, continue growing clean energy capacity, continue spreading clean energy generation and uh, clean energy technologies to more nations. But we also need to make sure that those trends move further and faster over this new decade. And to finish, I would like to leave the question to you all on how can we do this? How can we as individuals, business and countries make sure that we are committed to these trends to get where we have committed to get in terms of climate change? Thank you. I'm available to answer any questions if you would like to reach out to me directly or just to know more about this study.